Since the dawn of our race, we have been engaged in a never-ending quest to understand the universe. What makes the universe work? Where do we come from? How did we go from the early universe, the expanding universe, uh, to, uh, to becoming us? In recent decades, we have built machines that have taken us beyond our planet and allowed us to see deep into space. Now, NASA is building a brand new telescope that will allow us to see the universe as never before. This is a, a huge mission. This is a huge undertaking to build a telescope like this. This is the story of the next step in that quest. This is the story of the James Webb Space Telescope. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff of the space On April 24th, 1990, the Space Shuttle Discovery was launched on a very special mission. Today, the Discovery sits in retirement here at the Udvahadze Center in Virginia. But on that day in 1990, it carried in its cargo bay what would become one of the most famous satellites of all time the Hubble Space Telescope. This is a replica at the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. But the real thing is a landmark in human exploration. It reveals that the universe is 13.7 billion years old and its expansion since the Big Bang is accelerating. But Hubble had an even more impressive trick up its sleeve. It literally allowed us to look back in time. This is the Hubble Ultra Deep Field image. Some of these objects are so far away that the light seen here started its journey 13 billion years ago. This means we are seeing the universe as it was in the distant past. But Hubble can only see so far back in time. And to understand why, we have to understand the nature of light. Just like the ripples in this pool, light travels as waves. The distance between each wave is called the wavelength. Whereas we can see this distance easily for the ripples in the pool, the wavelength of light is 100,000 times smaller. Even so, our eyes can instantly determine what wavelength light has. It's something so natural to us, we may never question it. You see, when our eyes measure the wavelength of light, it appears to us as color. Short wavelengths appear violet or blue. As the wavelength gets longer, the light changes to green, yellow, and finally red. If the wavelength gets longer still, it becomes invisible to us, and is now known as infrared. This wave nature of light also means it's subject to something called redshift. It is this phenomenon which only allows Hubble to see so far back in time. And redshift is created by the universe itself. It's created because the universe is not static. It's expanding. As light travels through space, its wavelength is stretched by the expansion of the universe. This turns the light more red, which is why it is called redshift. If the light travels far enough, it can be stretched out of the visible range entirely and into the infrared. This is the reason Hubble cannot see further back in time. So to look back to the time of the first stars, when the universe was first illuminated, we need a new instrument. And here, at Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, NASA is building that instrument. It's called the James Webb Space Telescope. This will be by far the biggest telescope NASA's ever put into space. And so there were a lot of technological and engineering challenges to overcome. So this is the mirror of the telescope. Um, so we have 18 um, mirror segments here. These are made out of beryllium and coated with a very thin layer of gold. So basically the light comes in this way, collects on the primary mirror. Um, it comes down to the secondary mirror and then is focused back through um, the tertiary mirror back here. All the science instruments, the cameras, the spectrographs are behind the mirror. So so, so this structure here is where um, that um, big black structure in there will fit. In order to detect yeah, the faint there. infrared signals from the distant universe, the telescope must be built in a contaminant-free environment known as a clean room. You can see along this wall over here, this is an entire wall of filters that's actually three thick. 
Um, so air is constantly flowing through the clean room in order to keep the environment inside very clean. Um, and the reason for that is some of those, um, those things that, that can happen on Earth um, would be amplified once you get out into deep space. And so we have to make sure all the, the um, technical components, all the instrumentation stays very clean. By viewing the universe in infrared light, the James Webb Space Telescope can do more than just look back in time. This is one of the key scientific challenges of, of astronomy, is to understand how stars are born. And what's made it difficult is that it happens inside opaque clouds of dust. Now as it happens, uh, infrared light will go around dust grains, while a short wavelength visible light will bounce off. So we're now able to see inside the dust cloud to see where the star is being born as we speak. To me, the most exciting thing about JW is uh, the hunt for more exoplanets, planets around other stars. And if we can infer anything about them from observations using JW. To date, we have discovered 800 exoplanets, as well as 3,000 other potential candidates. The James Webb Space Telescope will help us find more of these and also determine whether they contain the conditions for life. If during our lifetime they were able to show that there was a strong indication that there was life on another planet somewhere else, I think that would change the way we see ourselves uh, and our philosophical outlook profoundly. Why is this important to us? It's part of our history. Um, and it also begins to tell us what's our future. When the James Webb Space Telescope is launched in 2018, it will allow us to look further away and further back in time than ever before. It will allow us to peer through clouds of dust to see new stars being formed. It will shed more light on the origins of life. And it will take us one step further along in our quest to understand the universe and why we are here.